In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good morning. I want to share the following from a little book called Journeys with Celtic Christians, and it seems appropriate for today. I saw a stranger yesterday. I put food in the eating place, drink in the drinking place, music in the listening place, and in the sacred name of the triune God, he blessed myself and my house, my cattle and my dear ones, And the lark said in her song, often, often, often goes the Christ in the stranger's guise. This morning, our scripture from the Old Testament relates God's appearance to Abraham, the exchange between them, and the hospitality at the hands of Abraham. As you may know, The manifestation of God to a human being is called a theophany. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. Abraham looks up. He had not seen the men approaching from a distance, though he is seated at the entrance of his tent. They were just there. We are given to understand that these three visitors, or one of them, is God. But Abraham doesn't realize right away who these men are. Their identity is hidden from him. Characteristic of a theophany is that the one of greater importance, God, would customarily, customarily speak only a few words. The one of lesser importance would do most of the talking. Abraham runs from his tent to meet them, and after the customary bow of greeting to the visitors, he begins speaking to one of them. So let's see. My Lord, notice the lowercase l when Abraham addresses this stranger. Scripture is suggesting that Abraham is unaware that this is God. My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves. And after that, you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. Five words. And in case you weren't counting, I did the counting for you. And not to be too particular about it, but Abraham speaks 55 words compared to the men's five words, besides the fact that this is an English translation. Abraham seems enthusiastic about the plan that he is going to execute as he hurries to bring a little bread. Notice how scripture describes the preparations. Abraham hastened into the tent after he ran to meet the three men. To Sarah, he says, make ready quickly three measures of flour. As an aside, this is an abundant amount of flour, about one bushel. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Remember, Abraham is quite advanced in years, yet he runs. There is energy and a kind of excitement. He seems to understand that his guests are of some importance. Abraham brings the prepared food to the visitors and stands by them under the tree. His posture is one of service, of anticipation. The men seem to want Abraham to know who they really are. Thus, they said to him, where is your wife, Sarah? Is Abraham thinking, how can he know this? And what does this mean? Abraham replies simply, there in the tent. Then finally they relate the message, I will surely return to you in due season. 
and your wife Sarah shall have a son. It would seem that the more important part of this message is first. I will surely return to you in due season. The second part of the message, and your wife Sarah shall have a son, is affirmation of the promise that God had made to Abram when he was 99 years old. Chapter 17, verses one and two say, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make a covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. God comes to pronounce descendants from Abraham under the covenant that he has made with him. He comes to eat among mortals and to deliver a critical message to Abraham that Sarah and he are to have a son, a son to perpetuate the knowledge and worship of the God of love. He has stated to Abraham that his descendants will be as numerous as the grains of sand, earth, and as innumerable as the stars, heaven. Abraham's numerous offspring are to make God known and loved on earth, sand. Ultimately, they may become citizens of heaven, innumerable as the stars. Abraham's encounter with God and our gospel lesson about Martha and Mary do share a common thread. As Jesus and his disciples went on their way, Jesus entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. The first thing brought to our attention after Martha welcomes Jesus is that Mary takes her place at the Lord's feet to listen. Mary never says anything in this passage, but she has made it clear that Jesus is more important to her than her duties. Martha is going about her duties as a good hostess but becomes frustrated, perhaps a little overwhelmed with the preparations and the serving. Maybe seeing her sister Mary simply and seemingly indifferent, sitting there with Jesus just puts her over the edge. Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work myself? Tell her then to help me. Martha asks Jesus if he cares about her. She tells him how he should respond to her situation. Martha believes that she will get what she won't needs if only Jesus tells Mary to help. But Martha's focus is on the wrong person. She thinks that Mary is the one who can lessen her burden she is misguided. Jesus calls her name twice to be sure that she is really listening to him. Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Revised Standard Version of the Bible translates this verse as, Mary has chosen the better portion, which shall not be taken away from her. The word portion gives an even greater depth to Jesus' words. Portion can be defined as a share, an allowance of food allotted to one person. It can also mean the part or share of an estate given to an heir Mary has not left her sister, nor is she indifferent to her. She has laid her burden down and is serving in a more fulfilling way as a disciple. Martha does not realize that the Christ has come into her home. When Jesus calls Martha's attention to Mary, it is not to scold her or to say that Mary is better. 
He wants to elevate Martha to a higher level of service, to discipleship, to sit at his feet. To stay connected to God is daily bread for us as followers of Christ. When we ask for our daily bread, it is literal bread, yes, but more important is the request for spiritual bread, to see Christ more clearly every day. If we lose that connection, we become distracted by the world and lose our focus like Martha. Jesus comes as a man, as God incarnate, to dwell among mortals. His mission is to perpetuate the knowledge and worship of the God of love. He comes to deliver a critical message that he has come into the world to save sinners and to reconcile God and his people. Jesus' disciples will, in Paul's words, make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. God makes a promise to Abraham a son to perpetuate a faith in the God of love through his innumerable descendants. God also promises a son, his own son, bread for the world, who eats and drinks with us. A son to take our sins upon him, to die in our place on the cross, to redeem us, to reconcile us to God, our heavenly Father and by his rising from death and his resurrection, to those who believe on his name, Jesus, Savior, we may become children of God, as numerous as the stars, and live eternally with him. The mystery so long hidden has been revealed to his saints, to us. Let us choose the better portion food for the day during our earthly sojourn, and as heirs, a share of eternal life in Christ in a kingdom that has no end.